Okay, so let's have a look at the JSON setter annotation, which is used to identify a method as a setter method for a specific property. This is especially useful when the JSON data has a property name that doesn't quite match the property of the target object. As mentioned before, the JSON setter annotation is used to mark a specific method as a setter method for a property. It must be non-static and accept a single argument. During deserialization, the annotated method is called and the JSON property that is mapped to this method is identified by the name passed to the annotation as a value. An alternative way to achieve a similar result is to use the JSON property annotation. We'll learn more about this in another video. Okay, so let's see the JSON we're going to deserialize. This JSON is a representation of an author and we want to deserialize it into an author object. However, as you will see, the author class does not have a publications field, but instead an items field. What we want to do is to map the publications property to the items field. And we do this by annotating the item setter method with the JSON setter annotation and pass it the property name publications. Okay, let's switch to the code view and have a look at the author class itself. As you can see, I have annotated the set items method with the JSON setter annotation and passed it the property name publications. This method will be called during the deserialization of the JSON data string when it reaches the publications property. Right, let's have a look at the test. In the unit test, we are reading the JSON data into an author class and then asserting that the size of the items list is the same size as a publications array in the JSON data. Okay, let's run the test and check that this assertion is true. And yes, as you can see, the test has passed, meaning that the set items method was called during deserialization and the items list has been set as expected. Okay, now let's move on to another Jackson annotation.